Hello, and welcome back to MLB The Show 18 and the Jason Parham Road to the Show. I'm Tyrant Saber. Last time out, Jason won number 12 on the season against the Houston Astros in Minute Maid Park. He pitched for seven innings, allowing nine hits and three runs, including a home run. But uh, the Red Sox pulled it out, and we got the win. So let's carry on into the month of August. Bullpen day. What do we got? Two-seam velocity. Get it up to rating 90, which would be pretty cool. K for nine, two seam velocity. Ooh, that's pretty much six of one, half dozen of the other there. Um, batting, don't do any batting. Don't care about that stuff. So, uh, I guess it really just depends on how we want to flavor it. That's right. Good job. I wonder if we can hit 97. Okay, it looks like Jason's next game will be against the Toronto Blue Jays in the Rogers Center. Now, Jason has played against the Blue Jays a few times before. He's pitched against them uh, six times before. He still has an 0-2 record, uh, has a 3-6-8, excuse me, 3-8-6 ERA, and a 3-23 Woba against him. So, obviously, still not the best record against him. Hopefully, we can crack the win column against him at this point, because it's starting to get a little bit humiliating here. But we'll never get anywhere unless we get out there and get it. Wednesday night baseball now. North of the border, we greet you from Rogers Center in Toronto. Tonight, the second of three to start the week between the Boston Red Sox and the Toronto Blue Jays. Number 11 continues his chase for the top spot on the AL batting leaderboard. Next. Aaron Sanchez is on the mound for game two. Dan, any thoughts? Hey, Matt, it's not easy to bunch anything together against this guy. In his last three starts, he has a whip of under 1.10. So we may see some hit and run. We may see some bunting. And we may see some running. Because if you want to lay around and try to get hits off this guy, that's not the right thing to do. One of the top pitchers in the game right now. So striding in to Oscar Hernandez. It lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. Well, Boston got their job done in the top of the first, so with 2-0, let's get going. Over the outer half. Guys, this Red Sox ball club entering play here tonight. They come off another loss last time out, and in fact, they've dropped three of their last four. Yeah, Matty, I can't tell you how important it is to throw that first run up on the board, and that's exactly what they did. A little crooked number, a two spot. Swing and a miss a on an inside fastball. And and the oh, and two now. This team has been playing red-hot baseball recently. 95 miles an hour it's not the fastest ball you'll ever see but at two seam movement uh, it's pretty fast into the windup here comes the 0 2 pitch swing and a miss on yet another one and that's a strikeout to start the game how about that and get comfortable starting lineup who are you focused on Dan please act yeah Matt I cannot wait to get a look at Josh Donaldson the bringer of rain He's really had a heck of a year in the power categories, slugging over 500 coming into this one. That means almost every time he's hitting the ball, he's hitting it hard somewhere. Should be fun to watch. At the plate, Josh Rutledge took an 0 for 4 in the victory last night. Okay, well, Josh Rutledge next up to the plate. Uh, hitting 071 against Jason in 14 plate appearances so far. This is his 14th, rather. Like can up there, huh? Here's the first pitch to him. Here we go. Ball. He twitches at, ball. but does not swing at a curve ball down below the zone. Good eye for him, and good timing one. on him, too. So let's not try the same thing twice. Try an up inside fastball. Takes a Gets a strike. Ball for a strike. Oh, that's for sure going to be a pitch he wants back. You're not going to get many balls right in the wheelhouse. On the call from... from uh, like this. Think that Blake Swihart is a cutter to the outside corner. The 1-1. One, one. 
is taken for ball two. No swing on one outside, so that's fine. Two and one count. Usually in these counts, I will go for a changeup. Larry Bullard, pretty standard guy, works it. Only problem, I think, at times, hitters have a little bit difficult time. And he taps it. So inside corner and outside corner. Two and two counts. Yeah, but Larry's late on it, so the call now. I inside fastball. Let's do it. He's usually going to tell you. The 2-2. Two -two. Little sky pop-up for, is it Abreu who's going to get it? It certainly is. Mr. Jose Abreu ranges back to pick up the pop fly, and that's two away. Stepping in now is Mitch Haniger. He carries the eighth best average in the American League entering play. So following that, it's Mitch Haniger. I've let off both of these bat bats with curveballs. I don't want to get too predictable, so. Let's try a changeup to start this one. And that one is shot straight out to center field, but center field fielder, uh, who is that? Mikey Matuk out there. Pulls it in, ends the inning. Not bad. Here's the third baseman, Josh Donaldson. And as you take a look at the splits here, he's actually better against right-handed pitching this season. Hey, we're still in the early stages in this one. They're only down by a couple of runs, but it's really key for this leadoff guy to try to get on and get a big inning started. Try a cutter to start this one out, not listening to uh, Blake a little bit on the first call. Cutter low in the zone was good for a strike. Next call is a low inside fastball. On, now get your pitch up there. The wind up and the 0-1. Try that. Now a swing Ooh. And a deep right high. Left. Deep. And that it's one is out of here. Josh Donaldson. Second pitch he sees gets yoked right on off the plate to left center field, and Toronto is on the board. It's two to one. Home run number 15 for him thus far, and the Blue Jays are on the board. It's now a two to one ball game. Well, not for nothing have the Blue Jays been chasing us in the, uh, the title chase or the division chase. So, that's unfortunate. Well, if you're going to give up a towering blast to one of the best players in their lineup, it's better to do it with no one on base. It stings, sure, but it's so Well, bad. second it's deck home run in the game. on a two-seamer that was more or less middle of the zone. What are you going to do, Jay? Just pull your pants up and try it again. Jake Lamb standing in now. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. 22 home runs on the ledger for him so far this now, year. Now, I haven't really looked at the uh, splits for Jason in a while. Uh, I can tell you from looking at the numbers that the Brewers have the most number of wins over him, along with the Nationals, tied at three. Or rather, he's got a one and three record against the Nationals as well as the Brewers. But he has only played those teams a grand total of... Good change well, up looks like he's played them grand, the Brewers a grand total of four times and the Nationals a grand total of seven times. Blue Jays, he's played six times, and he's got an 0-2 record, whereas he has one win against both the Brewers and the Nationals. From the windup, the 1-1 pitch. And Tap that circle change up, so it's one and two on count. Play. And he was early on it. So how about we give him that slider? I'm going to go ahead and use some showtime because I'm not feeling it right now. And this one's and he got that one, too. Bases are empty here. Nobody out. Now the call is for change up outside. Well hit to right. And yanked that and one the down the first baseline. So he Foul. was there. He might not want to throw that one again. I know his timing was a little bit off at the dish, but he kept his hands back. Oh, and he got caught looking at the plate on a high fastball. So Jake Lamb goes down looking. We have our first out of the inning. And let's focus our attention on first baseman Jose Abreu. We know the bat plays, the ability to drive the ball out opposite field, no problem. 
but I don't think people realize how soft this guy's hands are at first base, constantly bailing his other infielders out. Into the box now, Rendell Richard. And there's a look at his home and road splits so far this year. First pitch on its way. A little bouncer. Tap the curveball low out of the zone for the first strike. Randall Grichik again, like his buddies, uh, they're starting to collect an awful lot of plate appearances against Jason. Uh, I think the person on this lineup who has the fewest is Josh Gallegos or uh, whoever at, in the nine hole. Excuse me. It's Josh Gallegos in the nine hole who has the fewest number of plate appearances against Jason with a grand total of four so far. But everybody else has no fewer than 13 at this point. And, uh, you know, among the players who have faced Jason, including Josh Donaldson's last shot, they have collected nine home runs against Jason in that time span. So these are guys who know how to mash Jay if they get the chance. Nothing in two count. And the catch is just got to not give him the chance. Swing and a miss at one well, well, well above the zone. Randall Gritchick goes out down on strikes, and after giving up the home run, Jay has struck two men out. Bouncing back from that home run to strike out the That's the way to do it. Sometimes you're going to get taken deep. I know I told you to pull your pants back up, Jay. I didn't tell you to put them up around your armpits. But then again, Jay has always been the old-fashioned type of guy. What with the high knee socks and the high leg kicks. Here's your one of Cespedes. Little tapper on the changeup over to first baseman Jose Abreu. One pitch, one out. And that gets us out of the inning. Some more of the colorful characters here at the ballpark tonight. The three of us return with more Wednesday night baseball after this. Now with... One home run on the board. The, the Red Sox find themselves still up, but their lead diminished to one run. He'll get us going in the home half of inning number three. And nothing comes across in the top of the third, so Jay comes back out here to defend his lead. He's ready. Here's the first offering. And of the people on this lineup, a change up it's a Ledmus, a well, no, it's not. I was going to say a Ledmus Diaz has the highest Woba of him, but that's really not the case. Uh, we got Jake Lamb with a 537. We got Randall Grichuk with a 522. And we got Mitch Hanniger with a 425. No oh, one. Here's and, you know, I aside from the metric that the I've had to corner. use where more is better with regard to uh, Woba, I will have to tell you a secret. I'm not 100% sure I could explain to you why you would use WOBA or what a WOBA means. I mean, I've kind of been thinking about it as in the number of runs you're expected to get when a guy comes to the plate. Like in their average plate appearance. Because like the way WOBA works out is that each of your outcomes for a plate appearance when you make something happen is weighted according to its run expectancy. Very well could see it again here, though. So like a walk and a uh, hit by pitch do give you positive run expectancies, but like you're not they're not as positive as, say, getting a single and a single's not as positive as getting a double. So like the more not chasing those pitches, the more uh, Woba you have, clearly, the more likely you are to score a run. I'm just not sure how to express that likelihood or how to express the number in a way that makes sense to somebody who's not familiar with why Woba is better than, say, batting average. And that's kind of a failure, failing on my part when you consider the fact that I kind of started this series so that I would have that ability so that I would be able to explain some of these more advanced and baseball concepts to people out. who might not otherwise so uh, early, understand them or be conscious of them. If this keeps up, as we take a look at the league leaders in games won this season, and as you see, he's right up there among league leaders in that. Because department. for whatever else you might say about things like batting average, OBP, and slugging, uh, they're at least easy to explain because batting average the, is the rate at which people get base hits when they come to, when they get a, a batting average. Uh, excuse me, a, a at-bat uh, plate appearances or, or OBP. Number or the more likelihood of them getting 
on the base paths when they come to the plate. Slugging percentage is the number of bases that they tend to get when they get a bat at bat. But Woba is a little tougher to express just because not all plate appearances are measured the same, and as a result, you wind up not uh, having... You know, That's it's it's like pitch to hit. That's as, in the pitch a, a single is not one. Pitch. That a walk is not in. one. A, really a triple is not three. Pitch is if you're looking for it down and in. And At this point, I'm just not entirely really sure what I'm talking about either. A one and two count to the Blue Jay signal caller. I think I've said it before, but sometimes I just kind of run out of stuff to say when I'm up here. And uh, considering my life is not terribly exciting outside of uh, what I do here. And even this is not all that exciting, let's be honest with ourselves. Um, I generally don't have a heck of a lot. Oh, that's a pop center. fly out to center Mato field where Mikey Matuka waits Two down. to pull it in. Not where I wanted that curveball to go, but, you know, no harm, no foul, isn't it? A uh, inadvertent ant special there, it looked like. So curveball top part of the zone. Hernandez. He went down swinging to start the home first. So we're back up to Teoscar Hernandez, who struck out to start the game. Fastball that time. Well, that two-seam fastball ran a little too much off the plate, but now that sets him up to work with something away and maybe even an off-speed pitch. So try that change up down in the zone. And he gets it, but it pulls on the third baseline. So that's one and one to start the at-bat. The one now one. cutter outside is the call. Hit the other way out toward right. Skied field. out there to Moving right field. It, who Romero. it's not J.D. Martinez. J.D. Martinez has a broken arm. That is Randall Romero out there. And order. with a Our quick fly out, that ends the third one. inning. Digging in, Josh Rutledge. Sets a lead us off in the home half of the fourth inning. Lots of baseball. So at five to one, I think we're pretty well on our way to a victory here. But as I noted before, uh, it's not impossible for these guys to pull things back. There were a couple All Stars off of this team for the American League. So let's not get too arrogant up here. Ooh, um, called that one a strike, and I am not sure how. Up on that inside curveball, little front hipper. That's a tough pitch. You just can't figure out where the point of contact should be. The wind up and the 0-1. Nope. That one was a lot more plausible, but it's still a ball. That looked like it could easily have gone the other way. So that's probably just a makeup call. and two and one and one. But now this next pitch probably becomes so, the biggest of the So, in any case, um, what was just kind of a funny number? The plane of the plate, it's a ball one that I have a hard time explaining, except for the fact that uh, it's like slugging. It's like uh, OPS, but it's better. It's basically what it boils down to. It's like OPS, but it does a better job of representing how likely someone is to score a run when they come to the plate as opposed to uh, straight up OPS does. The one two higher is always better for Woba. Swung Swing and a miss. Josh Rutledge goes down on strikes, and that's now strikeout number four in four in. So Jason is on path for that 9.0 K for nine. Had some real good late life. Now it's Mitch Hanniger once again. Uh, one thing where OPS might, or uh, where Woba might not be as convincing a number as some of the other statistics is when you compare, say, OPS and slugging, or batting average and OPS. In now, because while you always want an o a better OPS, it's kind or while you always want a better Woba, but Woba along with OPS is kind of blind to how you get to that number. And while it is advantageous from an OPS and Woba standard to have somebody who, say, walks, you know, 40% of the time, 50% of the time, um, from a game perspective, it's a lot more advantageous to have somebody who can mash a lot because it's more likely that other people on base are going to come in for runs. 
So, you know, it's, not, it's kind of priced in with Loba, where runs aren't valued quite as much as, uh, excuse me, walks aren't valued quite as much as base hits. It doesn't matter how hard especially the higher base count, you know, the extra base hits is what I'm looking for here. Uh, it's priced in, but it's not as apparent as it is when you're looking at somebody's slash line, their uh, combination, batting average, OBP, and slugging percent. That somebody doesn't walk a lot, but gets a lot of extra base hits. I don't anybody would want to be an umpire. That manager has given this umpire an earful on a pitch that he thought was a strike, and he's certainly trying to defend his pitcher. I mean, I'm kind of inclined to agree on that one. That's a fair ball. And Mitch Hanniger gets to base on a, or excuse me, not Mitch Hanniger, that was Josh Donaldson, I think. Even his soft contact is finding all stand. He's making it nearly Yeah, that was just kind of an unlucky, unlucky drop there. If it had been a couple inches to the left, it would have fallen out of bounds, but that's not what our, uh, that's not the circumstance we find ourselves in. Here in the inning, following the two-out single. Yeah, that hit might not amount to much, but anytime mm, you can twitch on that little cutter a inside, one and zero still changes dramatically. Well, that was a big two-out single we just saw, and for pretty obvious reasons, swing and a miss on a curveball though, and that'll bring us to He's got to deal one and one. Hitters here with a runner on base, and Josh Donaldson standing over there like a chump at first base after that lucky pop fly that fell in. And he taps that circle change, which isn't doing us a heck of a lot of favors today, it seems like. Maybe I'm mistaken, but, like, I feel that the circle change has gotten hit a lot more than some of our other stuff. That, on the other hand, slider to the outside corner gets chopped over to DJ LeMayhew, and that'll end the inning. One left for Toronto. They're down 5-1. to one. Coming forward now, the Toronto designated hitter, Rendell Britcher. He'll lead things off as we begin the home fifth. This one doesn't look good so far. Down by a boatload as we enter. Swing and a miss on a high fastball this time. 0-1. Oh Call is now for a two-seamer on the inside. I like it. Let's do it. The windup and the 0-1. And he taps that one off. He was late on it, so now the call is for low fastball. All right, come on now, one time, let it fly. The wind up and the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, and Randall Richard goes down for the second time tonight, and these guys are swinging at everything. Outing for him tonight as we show you the league leaders in ERA, and as you can see there, he currently leads the AL in that department. Here's the left fielder, Ioannis Cespedes, comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. Try a curveball first pitch, see what he does with it. And he takes a pitch that's ruled a strike. That's a strike, apparently. Liberal strike zone there, it's 0 and 1. Jason getting away with murder today. Hey, plays that first, plays that first. Get out of here. Now here's the pitch. Swing and a miss on one on the inside, and I got to say, Yohan Assessment back in the hole. This start has been pretty exceptional. He's mixed east and west really well, and it's a big reason why he's had success. Try a cutter on the outside corner. Not quite. Didn't get quite get back to the zone, but uh, we're still at one and two. Here we go. High in the air nice little pop field. up to center field. Mato Mikey Mott hooks out there to pull it in. That is two outs. Ready for another chance. Aledmus Diaz. He popped out in his first trip. Okay. What do you say? Got a fastball coming. 
scorched at the Rounder over to uh, Mr. Oh, Rafael Devers, who the sets the him out. One pitch, one out, and that'll end the fifth. One, two, three, go the Blue Jays. They're down here five to one. Here's the catcher, Luke Maley. He'll start things out in the sixth for a lineup that really hasn't found its groove in this one. Yeah, only two hits so far, Matt, and not very many hard hit balls either. We'll see if they can start making some adjustments. All right, well, going into the sixth, Boston up 5-1. We out here putting in the work. Here's the first. Jason being Jason right now. Change up in for a strike. So we got a pinch hitter now, I think. Did I, am I seeing that right? The 0 1 pitch. That's Luke Maley. That sure is Luke Maley, so got a pinch hitter out here. One down. One pitch, one out for him. Best of luck to you. Again to Oscar Not Hernandez. sure why they pulled Josh Gallegos, but it is what it is. I mend my little chart here because, well, because I do this live, unfortunately. It's a hell of a lot less trouble to do it live than it is to try to do it all uh, in post and have to watch every moment. Come on, big We're in the sixth like inning now of a five to one circle ball game. change, and he's calling for the same thing again. I mean, I guess that's a little bit reverse psychology on him, swinging a miss on it outside the zone, and we're zero and two. So I guess I guess it worked. Hard to say it didn't. How about slider outside corner? See if you can reach it. What do you say, uh, Hernandez? Swing and a miss. And they got him with the slider Blew there. it right past away. him, and you're gone again. So he's just a third of an inning away from putting up another zero as we take a look at the ball clubs with the lowest team ERAs. And you can see that this Like staff having these shut down innings. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> Justify my continued employment with the Josh Red Sox. Keep them from trading me. In his last at bat. Rutland. And now pitch on the way. Ooh, cutter outside. Bad pitch, non-competitive. So let's try that change up inside a little better. Got a tap on it, and that'll make it one and one. Josh Rutledge, third plate appearance. One strikeout, but nothing else going for him. In fact, the only person who's made any production today at all has been Josh Donaldson. But that's going to go right past Jay into center field and spoke too soon, as they say. And that'll make it two outs with Josh Rutledge on first. And that will be one of his few base hits against Jason in his career. He's got a career 125 batting average against him now after that swing. That'll bring up Mitch Hanniger. Riding into the box, Mitch Hanniger. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. First pitch on its way. Little tapper up to center field, but once again, DJ can't get over to it, and that'll be another two out single for him. So they're putting something together here in the bottom of the fifth, the, the fifth, the sixth, is it the sixth? It is the sixth. Four thus far. So Josh Donaldson coming to the plate. He's the man who's made the only noise that uh, Toronto has made all night. First pitch so let's the find end. out if we can on hold him way. scoreless. And a ball, one First one ball on the corner that well, looked pretty good to me. Pretty much all game. They're hoping they get it right now. This would sure be a good but. time. Oof, and that's center the cut fastball that he right. fouls off. That's second. Was late on it, on so that's not down. fantastic. This one's Bounce over to Rafael Devers, but that's going to do it. Force out at second, and we over. go into so no the seven. No errors in two Still leading stranded. five to one. Through six full. It's the Red Sox five and the Blue Jays one. 
now at the plate, Jake Lamb. Leading off with a game. It doesn't look very promising so far in this one as we move into the later innings. Down by a bundle, it's time to get some base runners and hopefully a long ball to get them back into this one. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. And that one stayed too low, apparently. Okay, so 5-1 still in the bottom of the seventh. Uh, missed with the fastball, so it's 1-0 to lead off against uh, Mr. Jake Lamb. Pitches look all right so far. Might leave Jay in for a uh, complete game, but I kind of doubt it. That's not the first time he's locked a guy up with it. Curveball has been doing pretty good so far today. Fouled off that fastball to the third base side, and he would lay it on it. So how about an high inside cutter? The one-two. Fouled off. I'm not sure what I'm doing here now. This is line to left. Line shot to the left field, and Jake Lamb gets himself a hit a run on or a hit on the board with a double. And that's going to be man on second to start the seventh inning for him. Had much luck so far tonight, so they'll definitely take that extra base hit. It only takes one, so maybe they can string together a few and get back into this. They out here doing their thing. Here's Randall Gritchick. Mm. Right on the corner and not quite getting back to it. He's 0-2 with two strikeouts today, so he's going to want to avoid that sombrero if he can help it. Now the 1-0 finds the zone strike one. strike there, so we're 1-1. One one. Interesting at bat. I think he has to be pitching for a strikeout here, so we'll see what kind of sequence he uses. Sequencing is not something that I give a lot of attention to. I mean, I it might just be because I never played baseball uh, as a, an organized sport. I never pitched, so I have never given a heck of a lot of thought to sequencing as a uh, as a discipline. Line drive to left. Crank that shot to to. Uh oh, that's right off the wall, and that's going to be a run dr driven in. On kind of a silly little. And they're not gonna get him. He's yep, Jake Lamb had to go whoop de doop de doo out there on the base path game, between folks. second and third because he thought it might get ticking, caught. But, that but they had no shot of making that throw all the way out, out there the from the left field dugout. wall. We'll so now that was over Mr. Benintendi's head. So that's five to two now. Randall Gritchick. Center cut that slider, which is no good. So let's. Uh, yeah. Here's the left fielder, Yoenis Cespedes. And he'll take a look at a high strike that time. It's nothing in one. No hits to this point. Hey, get a good one up there, huh? Hey, we got no one here. The 0 and 1 Try delivery. a change up now. Taps it inside. Two runs, six hits. And now the call is for an outside curveball. Give it to him. Did he go? He did not go. Wow. Where was that ball even? Right on the black. Hmm. That's tough. Swing and a liner. Yoked out to right left field, but uh, Ben Intendi can get to that one. And that'll hold Gritchick at third for the first out. In now, Aledmus Diaz. And he's got to get on base any way he can with that possible tying run behind him in the on deck circle. First pitch coming, here it is. Okay, slider still drifts to the center of the zone. I never like those. Hit the other way. Gave him a little ant field. special there, top of the zone curveball. 
Right field, that's Randall Romero and fly out, and that's two away. Is it still Luke Maley coming up? Yes, it is. So they must have had to pull Jose Gallegos for some reason. First pitch of the at-bat. Cutter, bottom of the zone. For a strike, get a, a change up going next. Same spot. 0 1, here's the pitch. Ta a little chopper over to Jose Abreu. He steps on it for the out, and that'll be the end of the seventh. So, with two innings to go, Jason starting to struggle a little bit. I got to figure that they're going to let him sit and bring out the relief. So that'll bring in nope. Oscar Hernandez. Nope, going into the eighth. the eighth. We're still and up, apparently. They're going to have him face yeah, Teoscar Hernandez. On the mound, partly due to the lead his guys gave him to take some of the pressure off. He's so, that and Jason's going to have to hold it together for at least another inning. And Swing and a miss here, well over. and truly early on that one. Hey, see it and rip it up there, kids. See it and rip it. Hard hit ball to There's a quick little curve ball over there to DJ for the first out. Five outs to go. So you've got to figure he's got a good chance here to finish this one off. And with that in mind, we take a look at the league leaders in complete games. And as you can see there, he's currently in fifth place in that department in the AL race. Digging in and looking for more, Josh Rutledge. He singled his last time up. Parm getting tired on account of Jason is still using the uh, closer archetype that he was given on the Padres. Still hasn't had the opportunity to switch back to an actual starter archetype. Gotta hope that's a bug they'll fix in. We got one. First um, spring on its way. In, in, in. A swing and a shot Oof. down the corner. High far. And it'll fade. Peeling the just end. foul at the end. Foul ball. Josh Rutledge almost claws another one back for. Uh, for Toronto here, but instead it's just a foul ball. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Nope. And a curveball. Just that missed the zone with that one, Jay, and as a result, we're 1 and 1. Cutter high outside part of the zone. I'm going to go inside instead. Like to paint these corners a hell of a lot more than I like to attack the center of the zone. Up that time for ball two. But at 2 and 1, now's the time. Oh, I don't like this one. Swing and cranked it. Deep left, left field and, and gone. Josh gone. Rutledge pulls another one back to for Toronto. On make it five to three. A solo home run off the bat. And Josh that Rutledge. very well may be Jason's day today because that was unfortunate. Games. Wow, he really hit that ball well. Put a great swing on it with great extension, and it sailed right out of here. My goodness. And that'll do it for Jay today after seven and a third. He's going to get pulled. But it's still a quality start for him, you got to say. So he was able to only get that first out in the eighth, but nonetheless, he'll depart with the lead. It's not the way you want to leave these games, but hey, we got Craig Kimbrell coming out here, so not going to complain too much about that one. So what do you say, folks? We're going to be able to hold together for five more outs? Survey says... Well, in hindsight, it was the right choice to let the setup guy stay in the game and finish this thing. I wasn't so sure before, but the results sure speak for themselves. And tonight's final, 7-3. to three. The Red Sox jumped out to an early lead in the first and never looked back. Jason Harum picks up his... Well, it wasn't the prettiest appearance of Jason's win. career, but he Frank walks Kimbrell out of the Rogers Center the with the win, going pitching seven and third so innings, allowing seven hits tonight. for three runs, Martin including DeRose two homers, collecting six strikeouts, and the win. He goes to 13 and four on the year, and he goes to 41 and 30 in his career. His ERA is at 1.98, his FIP is at 2.25, and his XFIP is at 2.75. So that's going to do it for me. 
Until next time, I'm Tyrant Saber, and I will see you at the ballpark. <laughs>